My name is uh, Gladys Kimani. I am married. I am a mother of three children. I am um, the one is a young adult. The other one is a teen, and then the other one, no, the, yeah, two of them are teens. So I am not a very young mother, and I really thank God. I bless the name of the Lord. I came here when they were a bit small, and they have grown. I've seen them grown when I've been working here, and uh, I have seen the heart of the Lord as I worked here in Cornerstone Academy. So I... I'm going to go straight to the word of God because that's why I am here. And I have a message titled, I, I know the theme of this year in Deliverance Church because most of the days of the week I'm here from Monday to Friday. I usually fellowship with SITAM, um, SITAM that is Christ is the Answer Ministries at uh, Park University. That's where I, I, I attend the church. I'm a member there. I am here as a staff, and I enjoy the, the environment here because here it is knowledge founded on Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So I have uh, given my message a title today, and uh, I decided to anchor my, uh, the theme of my message on uh, the theme of the message of the year, and that is uh, threshing the mountain. And today I decided to tackle one, and that is the threshing the mount, the mounting of, um, of the challenge of faith. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah, I know most of the time when uh, uh, we struggle with faith, sometimes when you want something from God, or sometimes when you when you see the premises of God in the Word of God. Most of us, we tend to struggle, and that is me included, but as you grow, as you grow, you will learn, and that's why I decided uh, to tackle on this one, and I believe that is what God wants of us today, because it shall be done here in uh, uh, Deliverance Church as it is in heaven. Praise the name of the Lord, and I believe with all my heart that is why God wants us to uh, to. Uh, uh, to learn about this message, that the challenge of, uh, of faith, most of us find it a challenge to believe God. When you need something, when you are sick, when you are uh, confronted by something, we usually find it sometimes, even when the word of God is given to us, uh, before we receive the word of God, we want to have faith. But that is not, not the way the things go. And I'm going to, from the word of God, I'm going to, uh, from the scriptures, uh, I'm going to explain briefly what faith is from the word of God. And I'm going to, uh, maybe the media can give me Romans 10, uh, verse 17. Romans chapter 10, verse 17, please. So then faith comes. Everybody say, faith comes. Yeah, you will bear with me, I'm a teacher. So, <laughs> uh, it is good when you talk to yourself. Huh? We talk to one another. Faith comes. Everybody say that. Faith comes. Yeah, so faith comes. God does not expect you to generate faith out of yourself. All right? So, faith is given to... Please keep the scripture there, please. So, then faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing, like the way you are hearing right now. And what are you hearing? It comes by hearing the word of God, by hearing. Faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. Faith does not come when you are hearing politics. Faith does not come when you are hearing about the challenges that you have. Faith does not come by um, pitying yourself because of what you are going through. Faith comes because you hear the word of God. Praise the name of the Lord. And I, as I speak this, I, I remember sometimes back, I really struggled with my health when I was in school. And every time I was one of the leaders in the Christian Union, I would uh, 
run to the, uh, to the leaders and uh, I would ask them to pray for me and then they would pray for me and immediately I would feel better. But my, I had kept my body as, uh, I, was, uh, as uh, I was tuned to listening to the symptoms in my body. So every time they could pray for me, I could run sometimes, and sometimes I could be left in the dorm when others were, were studying in class. So it was a big challenge for me. In fact, I really dropped in my, in my grades in school. And uh, as I ran to them, I could, they, they could pray for me, and immediately I would feel good. You know, feeling, and I'm using the word feeling intentionally. I could feel good, and I believe the Lord would touch me because when you pray, God acts, all right? So, but after some time, it is like I was always waiting, always listening, and I could feel the symptom again, and then feel, oh God, I am sick again. And I remember it was so bad because the school I was in was neighboring a hospital. Until that developed, I could see myself in the mortuary, in the, in the hospital. It can't be that bad. And uh, as I struggled one time, uh, one of the girls in school, um, she, as she told me the, uh, later, she, uh, afterwards, she said that she, was, she felt disturbed. Not because I was asking to, uh, them to pray for me, no. She went and engaged God in an, uh, an argument. And she asked God, God, why don't you heal Gladys? Every time we pray, you know, she's always coming to us back, you know, in pain. Why don't you hear? And I, as she told me, she slept. Uh, that night she, was, she prayed as she, she slept. And then she dreamed. And then she was shown a, a dream where I was supporting myself with a stick. And I could, I, was, I could not move without the stick. I walked at a distance. And then all of a sudden, I dropped the stick. And then I, I started, immediately I dropped that stick, I became strong, and I started walking. And after some, a distance, I looked back and saw the stick where it was. And I went back. And I, I bent and took the stick. Immediately I took the stick that I was using, I became weak. That was the dream she narrated to me. And she never interpreted but immediately the Spirit of God gave me an interpretation. And because we were out, we were, I remember we were waiting to go for supper. And then I, I told them, uh, just uh, you will allow, we were going as a group. We were, we were leaders. We loved each other. We were friends. I told them, uh, you be going to the dining hall. I go and pick something. But I was not going to pick anything. I went behind somewhere. We, we used to go and pray. And I told the Lord, Father, forgive me because of unbelief. Immediately, the Spirit of God gave me the interpretation of the dream. And I went and I told God, God, from today on, I trust that you have healed me. And I'm telling you, the challenges did not stop. But afterwards, the Lord gave me a small book. It was on healing. And uh, it was on faith. And I remember that uh, it was a small book on, uh, or, or written by a man of God, um, one of the fathers of faith is called uh, Kenneth Huggins, and I read uh, Mark eleven twenty three, and I says I started reading, faith started taking place in my heart. It started entering. Faith came, faith came. As the word of God says, faith comes. So faith came into my heart, and every time I would feel the, those symptoms, I would not go to them. And after, after some time, they thought I was okay. And in fact, the joy of the Lord started, you know, bubbling within me. But I was, the symptoms were still coming, but I resisted. So after some time, uh, we gathered again as students. And then she was telling like it is a testimony from the Lord. And she said, you know, the way uh, Gladys, you used to get sick. And that time, I'm really, you know, st still struggling with the symptoms. But faith has come. Faith has come. So faith makes you stand in the face of challenges. All right? When faith comes, it makes you to stand when the waters are moving. When the waters are violent, faith makes you 
to stand, all right? And according to people, when they see you, they think you are all right. But you are on the way at the top. At the top of what has kept you down, all right? So after, uh, so they, they, they were discussing and then they were saying, you see, the, the way, and then they gave a testimony and the devil had. The devil had. Because the Bible says in Psalms 120, uh, 126 that they have, they have seen. I have seen what the Lord has done for me. And they have seen what the Lord has done for you. When faith comes, even others, they see what the Lord is doing in your life. Praise the name of the Lord. So faith comes. So everybody say that faith comes. faith comes. So if you have got any challenge in your life and you are struggling, faith comes by hearing the word, like now the way you are hearing. Praise the name of the Lord. So please, in the year 2024, do not struggle again with faith. Praise the name of the Lord. Do not struggle. And uh, the master himself, who is Jesus Christ, our Lord, uh, he knew that because he is the living word. And imagine uh, even at himself, he preached about himself because it was not enough. The Bible says, uh, there is a scripture here uh, in John chapter 1, verse 10. John chapter 1, verse 10, media, that he was, he was in the world and the world was... John chapter 10, please. Yeah, he was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. Can you imagine he was in the world? Everybody could see him, could see Jesus, but the Bible says that they did not know him. He was walking, and most of uh, uh, they, they looked at him, and they, they started uh, arguing about him, and then they started analyzing him, and they said, isn't this the son of Joseph? So seeing Jesus physically could not give them faith. Praise the name of the Lord. As he walked like you and me, they did not until he became the living word. Some of them, only some of them, when he worked miracles, when he uh, healed the sick, and, but yet some of them could not believe in him. But we see a story in the book of uh, uh, Luke chapter Luke chapter 24. There's a story after Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus took a lot of time, even with his own disciples. And you know, one day he asked them, who do men say that I am? And they were there and they say some of them. And imagine those were his disciples. They were talking every day with him. They were walking. They could see him do miracles every day. And I'll tell you why um, I am uh, talking like that today. Because some of you, you might think, I do not have faith. If Jesus was here, if, Jesus, if I would see Jesus, you know, I think my faith would be strong. Let me tell you what you will do. You will ask him, is this really Jesus? You will look at him. You know, you will look at maybe the, 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 the clock he is wearing or however he will be dressed, and you will doubt him. But let me tell you, you will never be weak in faith when you are hearing the word of God. Praise the name of the Lord. And he demonstrated this uh, by, uh, in Luke chapter 24, verse 13, Media, please. Uh, this is Jesus. Uh, this is a story about Jesus after he rose from the dead. Verse 13 says, Now behold, two of them, that is two uh, of the disciples, eh? they were traveling that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from, Jer from Jerusalem. Then go to verse uh, 19, please. And he said to them, that is Jesus, what things, what things they said to him, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, Go, please give me first 18, please, 18, yeah, then 
The one whose name was Cleopas answered, Jesus had asked them a question and said to him, are you the only one stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not known the things which happened there in these days? Verse 19. And he said to them, what things? The, so they said to him, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and the people. Verse 20. And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, today is the third day since these things happened. Yes, and certain women of our company who arrived at the Tob Ali uh, astonished us when they did not find his body. They came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. And certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. Then he said to them, O foolish ones, and, sure and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses, please note number uh, verse 27, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Imagine, this is Jesus preaching about himself to disciples who were walking with him and could see him physically. They met with Jesus and they were talking about what has happened, the things that they have heard, that Jesus has risen from the dead. And then Jesus asked, asked them, what are you talking about? And then they said, are, are you the only one who has not heard these things? Can you imagine And the Bible, you know, the Bible calls them the disciples of Jesus. They were not the disciples of John. They, they were people who had walked with Jesus before. And they are here, they are talking. And then they are asking the same, same Jesus. Have you not heard? Are you the only one in Jerusalem who has not heard? And then Jesus asked them, what things about Jesus of Nazareth? And they are talking to Jesus. So what does that tell you? That when the word of God says that faith comes by hearing the word of God, it is the truth of the matter. It is truth. And the truth of, of the word of God is absolute. There is nothing to be added. These are people who are walking with, with the Lord and they are talking to him. But they cannot recognize him. Yet they were with him for three good years. I don't know, even his voice. They could not even discern him with his voice. I mean the physical of, of, of the voice of the man. So you can imagine you are privileged. What does that say? That you who is here, who is hearing the word of God. That is the way God has designed for you to have faith in him. Praise the name of the Lord. And so when the Bible says that when two or three are gathered in his name, like the way you woke up very early and came here, believe that word. That whenever two or three are gathered in his name, he is there. And I really thank God because... We celebrated Jesus in this church because he is alive. And nobody was singing to him like he was dead. Praise the name of the Lord. Because Jesus is alive. Praise the name of the Lord. Jesus is alive. And then when he was singing, I imagine what the word of God says in the book of Liberation. That John heard the voice like many waters. You know? When they, we were singing in, uh, in Kibaluya, in Kijalu, in Kikuyu, all those languages, the Bible says that all the tribes from all the tongues in the earth, they will stand before him. And we shall all worship him. And some of them will stand before him for judgment from all the tribes of the earth. Praise the name of the Lord. So, the word, please, what are... Uh, what the Spirit of God is telling us this morning. Let us take God at his word. Praise the name of the Lord. If you want faith, only faith. The Bible says that faith 
is the hope of things not seen. The evidence of things hoped for. Faith is the only thing that touches those things that you cannot see. And one of them is Jesus Christ. You cannot see him, but faith will touch the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. When we read about the, the woman uh, with the issue of blood, sometimes when we read the scriptures like that, you, you desire that you will see him passing here. And then you will touch him. You know, you will touch the hem of his garment. Sometimes when we, we sing those, you know, those songs and then we have got imaginations. You wish that Jesus was, you know, was, was passing by in our day. That you will touch the hem of his garment. But I'm telling you, this is the, you are better than that woman. Praise the name of the Lord. When you lift your hands and some of you, uh, but it is not in this church. I saw everybody lifting their hands and dancing to the Lord. But some of you, when you go to church, wherever you go to church, please, when you come here, when, wherever two or three are gathered in his name, please don't be singing or praying when your hands are like that. Let your hearts be the antennas. Praise the name of the Lord. Let your voice, project your voice, because your words, your words, if it is the word that brings faith, even the faith needs your word. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Faith needs your voice. Praise the name of the Lord. So project your voice. Either whether you are singing or whether you are praying or whether you are worshiping or whether you are sharing about Jesus, do that excitedly. Praise the name of the Lord. Because it is the word of God. It is the word that brings faith. And, and you know when faith comes, all things are possible. All things are possible. So this morning, I don't know how many people are struggling with faith or maybe that problem or challenge that you have had. Sometimes you think, and that is the lie of the devil, and he tells you, you know, you don't have enough faith. But I'm telling you, when you hear the word of God, act on it. You don't need anything else. Praise the name of the Lord. You don't need a powerful preacher. You just need the word of God. Either you read it from the from the Bible, or you hear it like the way you are hearing it. Praise the name of the Lord. And sometimes when you are here, you are reading it from the, from, from the Bible. Speak it out. Faith does not need that. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And that is why sometimes, you know, uh, when you come, when the, the word of God, it lifts you up. It will lift you up from the pit that you are in. It will lift you from that challenge that you are in. He did it for me. Praise the name of the Lord. When I was so sick, in fact, I changed my walking style. I was walking like that. But the word of God straightened me up. Amen. And I can continue giving my experiences and experiences of the way I have engaged with the word of God. And I have seen God working in my life. Praise the name of the Lord. And when I usually talk to people one-on-one, -on -one, I usually share those experiences to show that the word of God is alive. Praise the name of the Lord. And today I have had an opportunity to stand here because I am a witness through experiences that faith is a faith that is living. Faith that is living because the Bible says that faith without works is dead. But the word of God will cause your faith to have works. Praise the name of the Lord. The word of God, when the faith that comes by the word of God, I am telling you, it will never be dead. It will cause you to do that which the word of God says, because that is what you call faith. Praise the name of the Lord. So do not go home with that challenge, and then the devil tells you, you need to go and see another prophet there. You, go and see, you, you need to hear a famous preacher there, or you need to run here and there. When you have got the word of God, you have got faith with you, and it will lift you up. And we can continue this year knowing how to threat that challenge of faith. Praise the name of the Lord. Using the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. It is a sword. That is why it is able to threat that mountain. Praise the name of the Lord. The word of God is a sword, and it is the sword of the spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. And you know it is not by might nor by power, but by the spirit of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is why I am standing here. 
Because it is not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So I do not know if there is someone here. Maybe you are not born again. And maybe you say, I do not have faith to get saved. Maybe the people who get saved are those who have got faith. I don't know whether you are here. And that is the way why you have not given your life to the Lord. Because the enemy has been lying to you that you do not have faith. Anybody who would want to, to have faith, to put your faith in the Lord and to believe in the Lord today, because God is not a liar, he is here. Jesus is saving today. Anyone who, would, who is not born again and you do want to give your life to the Lord, anyone, maybe you are here, you have never given your life to the Lord, this is a good opportunity for you. Anyone? We are all believers here. We have all faith in God. Wonderful. This is a beautiful church. But next Sunday, please, I invite your neighbor who is not born again. Praise the name of the Lord. Don't come, all of you, when you are born again. Bring others in. Praise the name of the Lord. So may the Lord bless you so much. Uh, it was nice. Uh, I've also felt excited and blessed of, of the Lord. The word of God has also blessed me and lifted me up. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen.